Good afternoon. I'm Tim Skunas, Vice President of R&D for CyberOptics Corporation. And the title of my talk is Fast 100% Wafer Bump Metrology and Inspection. The agenda, I'd like to go through uh, some high level drivers for 100% wafer bump inspection of metrology. I'll introduce 3D digital fringe projection technology. And then uh, discuss applications and advantages of the 3D fringe projection technology. I will also introduce a tool called the WX3000 for 100% 3D, 2D inspection, of wafer level and advanced packaging applications. And then go through the benefits of a 100% inspection strategy for um, wafer bumping. And then finally, I'd like to touch on a commercially available tool uh, called the auto resistance sensor technology. Uh, the ARS sensor is used uh, in um, diagnosing uh, issues with the uh, plating process. And then I'll wrap it up. So between each slide, I'll pause a little bit. Um, and then this will allow the audience then to uh, catch up and read the remainder of the bullet points. All right, the dynamics driving the need for 100% 3D inspection metrology uh, with a shift to heterogeneous integration, obviously um, driving a lot of complexity. You may have chips from uh, different nodes, you may have chips from different manufacturers and um, putting this all together in a system and package uh, it becomes a very complex process, which obviously increases the need for 100% inspection uh, in order to control or to detect the defects uh, first and foremost, and then also to uh, manage the yields and improve the process control. And 100% inspection is um, vital and critical uh, in, in particularly in high reliability applications. Specifically to wafer bumping, the bumping, the bump metrology is fundamentally a three-dimensional measurement. Um, the height's, imp, uh, height's just as important as the size and location of the bumps. Controlling the bump height, both absolute and relative, so the absolute height needs to be within specification as well as the coplanarity. This is critical to ensuring reliable connections. And you have processes that are using expensive known good dye of course, the cost of failure then is very high. And if one bump fails, the whole package fails. So, and it's also our belief that current inspection speeds um, are too slow and expensive uh, for 100% inspection and metrology. So I'd like to introduce uh, 3D fringe projection technology. I'll give a high level overview of the technology. Uh, projected, um, Structured patterns are projected onto the uh, object that you want to measure and viewed from an angle. The, uh, any object with uh, three-dimensional features, the, those three-dimensional features will distort the pattern that is projected onto the object when viewed from an angle. And measuring those distortions then give us um, a measurement then of the uh, three-dimensional shape. Three-dimensional, uh, the 3D fringe projection technology is known by um, various other names, uh, phase shift profilometry, or, or perhaps Moray fringe projection. Um, in the example on the image at left, there are, well, in digital fringe projection technology, for sinusoidal patterns, there are uh, three unknowns at each pixel and those include the phase, the reflectivity, and the modulation. The height information, which is where the three-dimensional information is, is encoded in the phase, but you may have uh, changing reflectivities, and also the fringe contrast may change. So at each location, you need at a minimum three measurements then to uh, accurately measure the phase and get the three-dimensional information. So if we zoom in on that uh, recessed feature, the VLSI step target, you can see as viewed from the left, the uh, pattern in that recess feature is shifted to the left. By measuring that phase shift, uh, we can then uh, measure the height directly. What are the challenges for three-dimensional or 3D fringe projection technology? So 
First and foremost, uh, mirror-like surfaces, you can, uh, they can generate glints, which might saturate a camera. Uh, the light can be directed um, away from the camera and you get no data. For mirror-like surfaces, there's also an ambiguity uh, between the height and the tilt. The mirrored surface acts just like another optical element in a system, and you really don't see that optical element. You see the result of that, and so there is an ambiguity between the height and the tilt. Densely packed components and features present a particular challenge. Uh, you may have small components in close proximity to taller components that creates shadows or occlusions. And uh, probably one of the worst offenders are multiple reflections of the projected light. Those also can corrupt the height estimates if you just do the textbook reconstruction that I showed on the previous page. So in the example on the right hand side, I'm showing a couple passes with uh, very shiny solder joints. The solder joint on the right hand side, the projected light comes from the top and, and is viewed from the, on the right hand side, there's a direct reflection. The solder joint on the left hand side, there's both a direct reflection and then there's also a multipath event where a uh, projected light reflects off of the solder joint on the right hand side goes to the solder joint on the left, and that reflection then is superimposed on the direct reflection. So it's very important then to identify the multipath, the multiple reflections, identify those and suppress that. That's typically done by um, using several cameras or several projectors and designing the patterns appropriately. Okay, so, um, Additional challenges include the wide range of the feature sizes and material types, uh, as well as doing this at extremely high speeds. And the multi-reflection suppression technology developed by cyber optics was specifically to address all of these challenges. Here are some example applications of uh, 3D fringe projection technology. There are mobile devices, uh, manufacturing using SMT processes, uh, micro LED manufacturing, inspecting and metrology for uh, IC packaging, wafer level packaging and inspection. And to address that, Cyber Optics has developed a family of 3D MRS sensors. They have varying resolutions, fields of view, speed and accuracy to meet the needs and the requirements of each of these applications. So why 3D fringe projection technology? Um, there are more accurate optical measurement technologies. Those include confocal techniques, interferometric techniques, but none of them as compared to the 3D fringe projection technology has a, both the combination of the accuracy and the speed. So that's the reason that uh, we've selected the fringe projection technology for these applications. Um, it is possible to measure greater than 100 million 3D data points per second. Uh, this enables 100% inspection of, uh, at a 300 millimeter wafer at greater than rates of 25 wafers per hour. Uh, currently the capability is three microns lateral resolution and being able to resolve changes in height on the order of 50 nanometers uh, technology is scalable to about one and a half microns lateral resolution and 25 nanometers vertical resolution. And all of this obviously um, enables the capability to perform the 100% 3D metrology and inspection and also at the same time doing the 3D and the 2D in a single pass. Here's an example of a uh, tool uh, that does 100% 3D and 2D measurement. This tool includes the nano resolution MRS sensor that uh, I described on the on the previous page. The tool is available and uh, handle both uh, uh, 300 millimeter and uh, 200 millimeter wafers, as well as um, another form that handles 200 and 150 millimeter wafers. This animation, we're showing the nano resolution sensor 
and it's uh, capturing each field of view is 15 by 15 millimeters, and it's doing it at a rate of a greater than three fields of view per second. On a 300 millimeter wafer, there are approximately 360 fields of view that are at 15 by 15 millimeters. So at three fields of view per second, uh, this would require 120 seconds for those uh, 360 fields of view or about 200 millimeters to measure and inspect, excuse me, to measure and inspect a 300 millimeter wafer. So taking a step back and uh, briefly reviewing the uh, copper pillar process, manufacturing process, one of the key uh, process steps is the electrochemical deposition for, or plating uh, for both the copper and the solder. And the bump height distributions are greatly affected by this process. And good control of the electrochemical deposition that's critical to maintaining uh, bump height and coplanarity requirements. So given that review of the uh, bumping process, now let's take a look at what are the benefits of a 100% 3D inspection strategy and what, what it can provide. Um, you may have cluster defects, which could be an indication of either an equipment or a process issue. A sampled inspection strategy may miss the, those cluster defects. You could have repeating defects, which could indicate, for example, a reticle defect. Again, a sampled inspection strategy uh, might have difficulty picking that up. The bump height distribution of each wafer, uh, you can then use that to identify performance differences between different plating machines themselves or within the individual plating cells. And non-uniform bump height distributions uh, might indicate uneven current density distribution in the electrochemical deposition process. Additionally, um, measuring out to the edge of the wafer, which is enabled by 100% inspection, um, might help you avoid probe card damage. So while we're on the topic of plating, I want to mention another uh, commercially available tool for diagnosing plating uniformity. Uh, the sensor is called the auto resistance sensor. It's shown in the upper left-hand corner. It's 300 millimeters in diameter, shaped like a wafer, obviously, and thin. It goes into the plating cell itself and measures the contact resistance with a resolution of uh, approximately 50 microohms. And then that uh, resistance is communicated uh, back out of the machine from this sensor uh, wirelessly over a Bluetooth link. I'll show a quick little clip. So there are 50 pads around the diameter to measure the contact resistance. You can see in the animation here, it's being uh, introduced into the plating cell itself. And uh, those resistance, the contact resistance is measured quite accurately. And so um, there's, uh, we know that there's a direct correlation between the plating uniformity and the plating cell contact resistance. And so this um, tool, can uh, measure that contact resistance and help predict uh, when maintenance is required and shorten up those maintenance cycles. Here's some experimental data showing the correlation, demonstrates the correlation between the contact resistance and the plating uniformity. The blue line uh, on the left-hand side on that graph shows the um, resistance of the, of the contacts. And the red line is uh, measurements of the plating uniformity. So as the um, number of wafers processed is increasing, the resistance of the uh, plating cell contacts is increasing. And you see a corresponding decrease in the uniformity of the plating. And in the uh, graph, in the, as we get up to the upper right, the uh, 
contacts were then etched when it became a high resistance situation with poor uniformity. And after the etching, the resistance of the contacts drop and the uniformity is restored. To summarize, um, the um, controlling the critical dimensions of the, of the bumping, um, especially the height and coplanarity, are essential to forming uh, high quality, reliable contacts. And the MRS digital fringe projection technology with its combination of both speed and accuracy enables 100% inspection with throughputs of greater than 25 wafers per hour. The technology is scalable to uh, one and a half microns lateral resolution, 25 microns vertical resolution, excuse me, 25 nanometers vertical resolution. And both the 3D and the 2D metrology are done in a single pass. And with the MRS technology, you get the best 3D image fidelity uh, with MRS technology by identifying and rejecting these uh, spurious multi-reflections from shiny and mirror-like features. Um, so we believe that uh, the MRS sensor technology uh, enables um, measurement rates two to three faster times than uh, currently capable, excuse me, currently available in the market. And then this enables obviously the 100% uh, inspection at affordable prices. And lastly, the auto resistance sensor, which I mentioned uh, just previously, this is also another tool that uh, can help with the plating process to me by measuring the contact resistance and uh, predicting the uh, uniformity of the uh, plating itself. So to wrap up, uh, let's see. Oh, look, here's a photograph of me pre-COVID. Um, Cyber Optics was founded in the mid 1980s by a University of Minnesota professor. Um, he was my graduate advisor at that time. So I've been involved in the design and development of uh, advanced 3D sensors for 30 plus years. Um, all of the um, advanced 3D sensors for Cyber Optics Corporation are designed by my team here in Minneapolis, as well as our WaferSense uh, product family, which are typically used in front end tools for diagnostics and maintenance applications. So since it's in the middle of the night in Minneapolis right now, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Ferris Chen, who's uh, our director of semiconductor sales for cyber optics. Ferris is in the audience today, and he would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. <laughs>